In this video, I'm going to talk about infinite limits and vertical asymptote. Uh, before that, let's uh, review that uh, we know that the number over zero is positive or negative infinity. And the number over infinity is a zero. Infinity over number is infinity. But if you have a zero over zero or infinity over infinity, they are indeterminate form and you must do something. So let's take a look at these two functions here. f of x is 1 over x minus 1. We know that x cannot be 1 because function will be undefined and should know that there is a vertical asymptote. g of x is 1 over x minus 1 square. Again, x cannot be 1 and we know that there is a vertical asymptote at x equal to 1. Now both functions are not defined at x equal to 1 and has vertical asymptote but What's the limit? So the two big difference here in the limit is when x approaches 1 from the left and 1 from the right. So we should know that x approaches 1 from the left is 0 .000, 0 0.99999 minus 1, which will be negative number, but very, very small. So that means this function x approaches 1 approaches negative uh, from the one left is approaching negative infinity same thing if it is one from the right it would go to positive infinity and since these two are not same that's why it does not exist versus quite opposite here x approaches one from the left one from the right since the denominator is a square the number is always going to be positive and both limits are same so we can say that this is infinity now of course infinity does not exist but the biggest difference here is this is a one-sided limit they are different so that's why it does not exist here the both side function approaches infinity so that's why this is infinity now think about it say so what does the limit tell you in terms of positive negative infinity it tells you about the function that means function value increases or decreases without bound. So now let's talk about the fun from the functions, not the graph. Vertical asymptotes will only occur if there is no common factor. So here, x squared plus 1, x squared minus 1. We have to find vertical asymptote. So this is very straightforward x equal to plus minus 1, there is no common factor. So vertical asymptote at x equal to 1 and negative 1. Here, let's factor x plus 4, x minus 2, plus 2 minus 2. We can clearly see that there is a common factor at x equal to 2. So there is a no vertical asymptote at x equal to 2. You should remember this from the pre-calculus that there is a hole at x equal to 2 and vertical asymptote at x equal to negative 2. Now let's look at the other side. Here, x approaches 1, 2 over x minus 1. Now this is the easiest one. We should be able to understand that from the left, from the right, they are both going to be different from the previous page. So this limit does not exist and there is a vertical asymptote at x equal to 1. Uh, another similar function on the other side, x minus 3 factor you can clearly see that there is a hole at x equal to 3. And what happens when x approaches 3 from the both sides? In other words, you are trying to find the y value of the hole. And that is cancel out the x minus 3, x minus 1 over x plus 5 left, and the limit is 2, 8. Okay, so now let's uh, talk about another example here, x minus 5 over x minus 2. So this is quite interesting here is to see that when x approaches 2, sorry, um, let me try again. When x, oops, x approaches 2 from the right side, means you are coming from here, which is the number would be 2.000001. So all you have to do is just substitute 2.00001 minus 5, 2.0001 minus 2. You don't have to sketch the graph. You don't have to 
do the long division. You don't need to do absolutely anything. All we are just trying to check two from the right side, which is 2.0001. Direct substitution gives you negative three divided by positive number. That means positive infinity. Let's take a look at another example. 3x plus 10. 3 from the negative 3. I'm sorry, negative 3 from the left side which will be 2.9999, sorry, 3.00001. 3 times negative 3.0001 plus 10. Direct substitution gives you 3 times 3, 9. Negative 9 plus 10, 1. And this goes to negative infinity. So these are considered one-sided limit. You don't have to do the long division. You don't have to find the asymptote. You don't have to do anything. You just do the direct substitution. Okay, so now determine which functions below has a vertical asymptote. So this is considered that you should know the definition of the vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote occurs somewhere in the middle. So here you should be able to check that x approaches 3 function value is a zero. So this is clearly not a vertical asymptote. X approaches two, function value goes to infinity. So yes, this is a vertical asymptote. Function value approaches infinity when X goes to five from the right side. So yes, this is vertical asymptote. This is telling you that X is approaching infinity. X is going to infinity x is going to infinity, y value is negative 4. So that means this is the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, free response question kind of question. Uh, normally, FRQ, that means free response question. Uh, this is open-ended question. So consider this function x squared plus x minus 20 over x squared minus b, where b is a non-zero constant. So you have to come up with a possible, a possible value of b such that function has exactly one vertical asymptote. So let's always factor, factor, factor. The basic skill here involved is factoring. So let's factor the numerator. To make a 20, 5 and 4, x is positive, so plus 5 minus 4, x square minus b. So this is a difference of square. So let's say if we can say square would be x plus square would be x minus square would be. To have exactly one, there are two factors. One must be common factor. Then only you can have a vertical asymptote because we both we don't need a two vertical asymptote. We want only one vertical asymptote. So one must be a common factor so that there is only one vertical asymptote. So let's say a possible value of B is X equal to 16. So that five, I mean, sorry, square root of 16 is a four and four, four get cancel or 25 where square root of 25 is five. And then we can put it. So possible value is 16 and 25. Now, B says we want two vertical asymptotes. So again, factors are same, two vertical asymptotes. But to have a two vertical asymptote, we cannot have a common factor. So that means B cannot be 25 or 16. So let's say B is a 1. So x squared minus 1 is x plus 1, x minus 1, and they all are distinct factors or the unique one. Now, last one is very interesting. Find a value of B so that no vertical asymptote. No vertical asymptote, that means denominator can never be zero. If denominator cannot be zero, that means x square minus B is never equal to zero. And B has to be any negative number so that the denominator is positive and it can never become zero. So you can say that B is equal to negative one. It's asking for only one value. So the best answer is the simplest one, B is equal to negative one. So in this video, make sure you understand the concept of whole and vertical asymptote, limit from the left, limit from the right, and vertical asymptote, they both have a vertical asymptote, but how one limit 
exist, which is infinity, both sides, and the one does not exist. Um, for more practice, you can work on the practice problems. Thank you.